one of the bigger complaints we get from hunters is that uh, whatever broadhead they use is not putting down a good blood trail to find the deer. And uh, there's a big misconception about that. And manufacturers aren't helping because they're all advertising, you know, enormous blood trails on the packages and things. And there's been a trend in the industry to go physically larger and larger and larger with the cut diameters in an attempt to not only to some extent make up for a bad shot where you actually happen to hit wrong and you nick an artery, you know, luckily and able to retrieve the deer. But they're also working on the theory that, you know, a bigger hole in the animal puts more blood on the ground, therefore you can find it easier. And uh, the reality is kind of somewhat mixed. So what we've done is we've taken and simulated a deer. And we've taken a container that simulates the carcass of the deer itself and filled it with blood and a balloon, which basically is a lung full of blood or lungs full of blood. And we're going to take some shots into these and show you what happens when the arrow goes in and out and what kind of blood trail we get depending upon the angle of the shot being taken. To use this, we are doing a two inch cut, two blade mechanical head. So it puts a good solid hole in the animal as far as the way these things work. Uh, so we should get a lot of blood on the ground if it works what it's supposed to. So why don't we take and we'll start off with a shot from like a ground blind or if you're hunting from the ground where your entrance and exit are about the same height on both sides of the deer. The arrow passes clean through the simulated deer, popping the balloon and filling the cavity with blood. You can see the blood pooling on the ground below. As you can see from our last shot where it was parallel, we didn't get a lot of blood on the ground. Um, basically, this is what most people find when they hunt. They'll take a shot on a deer. There's a little bit of blood on the ground when it first got hit. And it's very little blood until you get to the animal, you gut it open, and all that blood that's trapped inside the animal gushes out onto the ground. That's very, very common on high entry, high exit angle shots. Now, the reason that's happening is it doesn't matter the size of the broadhead. What you're doing is you're not putting a drain hole in the animal. And that's what makes for a really good blood trip. So our next shot is going to represent that high angle shot coming in with a low exit and it's going to make a big difference on how much blood's on the ground. Check this out. The pass through is the same but with a drain hole the blood pool is dramatically larger. So that shot pretty much showing exactly what we want to happen in the woods. Low exit Big hole in the animal and lots of blood on the ground. That's what makes a big difference on how well the blood trail is to your animal. Um, now, did the size of the broadhead matter? Not really. Uh, I've seen blood trails like that, even with as small as seven eighths of an inch cut broadheads. Uh, so a lot of the marketing you see about how much blood's on the ground, that's great on a package and it sells broadheads. But the reality is that you're not going to get a great trail unless you have a drain hole in the animal for that blood to end up on the ground. So uh, I hope this explains it a little bit. Uh, it's not the broadhead guys. Pretty much everything you see with lack of blood and hard tracking has to do with all the blood and your animal still inside of it.